I didn't have any um, negative feelings about Rousseau. I had doubts about him. He hadn't proven himself to me. I wasn't overly impressed with him. But I, I, equally, I wasn't like convinced that it wasn't going to work. I, and I was very optimistic. I wanted it to work. I, you know, I. So long story here again. When I got let go in September of '99, it was September 10th, 1999. I still had two and a half years left on my contract. When Turner said, "Eric, just go home." We're still going to pay you for the next two and a half years. That's called, in, in in at least in the states, contractually, it's called the execution of a pay or play provision, which means they don't have to play me. Which means I don't. They don't have to ask me to come to work as long as they pay me. So in other words, I wasn't fired, but I couldn't go work for anybody else either. So they kind of put me in wrestling prison. But it was kind of nice because they were paying me a lot of money and I had two and a half years left of my contract. I was making almost $750,000 a year at the time. So f it. I'm going to go fish it. <laughs> I didn't stress over it. But when they called me to come back, and here's another legal thing, once, again, contractually now, and it's different here in the UK, I would imagine, than it is in the States. But in US law, once a company exercises that pay or play provision, they can't force you to come back to work. Now they wanted me to come back to work, but they couldn't force me to come back to work. So I had a, an agent in, in Los Angeles who said, well, here's how we're going to do that. We're going to force them to write you a check for the two and a half years worth of money that you have coming under your existing contract. And then we're going to make them write you a new contract. I thought, F you can pull that off. I'm in. <laughs> All day long. And, he, and they did. So when I came back to WCW, I came back not as an employee. I wasn't overseeing WCW. My job was to essentially be a consultant for creative. I was to oversee Vince Russo, but I reported as a consultant, not an employee. I reported as a consultant to Brad Siegel. So if, if, if Vince w wanted to do one thing and I wanted to do another, I didn't have the authority to say no but I did have the opportunity to say, okay, Brad Siegel, who's the president of the network, you're the tiebreaker. This is what Russo wants to do. This is what I want to do. You decide what do you want to do. And I love that. I, I didn't need to be in charge. I, my ego didn't need I didn't even want it, to be honest with you, because of everything that I had been through previously. Didn't want anything to do with that kind of responsibility at that time with that company. So I, I thought, I'm going to make this work. You know, when I met with Russo, Brad Siegel called me and said, hey, would you sit down with Vince Russo and tell me if you think you can work with him? And I, we discreetly, we met in a little restaurant lot, way outside of Atlanta because we didn't want anybody to see us together. And I thought, he's, he's a charming guy. Vince Russo is a very, very charming guy. Like if he was up here, you guys would all think he's the greatest guy in the world. If you had to do business with him, you'd want to slit his throat. <laughs> but he's a very charming dude. And uh, I, I got, he sucked me in. I, I, I'm sure I can work with this guy. It wasn't until months later that I went, <laughs> nope. <laughs>